everything has changed. Literally nothing for me is the same at all. I mean, we attended a lot of events afterwards. My kids, you know, had babysitters and stuff and I, and we spent, we, we, I always felt fortunate that we would spend so much quality time together as a family. Whenever we were together was, was our time and we were fully present and, and I never felt like even working as a working mom, you know, with my first daughter, you know, I, I never felt like I missed anything or I had to work and I had to make sacrifices. I felt really lucky that I had a really good work-life balance, even though I was sort of never, not that I was never home, but I was, wasn't home all the time. Um, and now I'm home all the time. And I almost feel to an extent for, from that perspective that I have a little bit of like Stockholm syndrome in a sense, because as hard as this all is, there's moments when I sit down and we have dinner or we cook something or I ordered oysters and I shucked them last night and like things that like I never would be able to do is sort of nice to have this time. I mean, granted, you know, the, like I said, the nine to five is a bit of a craze and you know, sometimes my little one who's super funny will terrorize everyone and rip everything apart and it just is the way that it is, but everything has changed. Nothing in my life is the same. And it doesn't necessarily mean that in a negative way, it's just that for me, it was a 360. I'm in Manhattan and and I love New York and I love being here and I love being a New Yorker and going out and running in the, you know, I run in the morning and I do things and all of a sudden I was inside, not utilizing New York the way that I was. So for me, um, everything is different completely. Cause it was March 3rd, it was March 4th, but I was on the train and like, I I switched trains in Berlin. So, or maybe it was uh, this town or city was called Bichefer. And so the train stopped like it was supposed to. And then um, all the like doors couldn't open up because on the, um, like the car has different wagons. I don't know if you call it trailers, wagons. Okay, um, carts? No, what? Yeah. So the in the first car, there was a girl and she was like cough, coughing very badly. And um, like, I don't know if she said she thinks she has Corona or if another person said, or maybe she has Corona. But anyways, so the doors closed and they weren't going to open up until the case was resolved. So... Um, a doctor, but not like a normal doctor, but like from the States or something, had to come and check her. So, and we were at the train station in like seven, I think seven or eight police cars and also like the big vans. They came to the train station and the police were like with the masks and all that. And which is like literally just standing around and waiting for the results. So we were in the town for one and a half hours and um, yes, it turned out it wasn't the corona. Ooh, I st I'm struggling with that one a little bit because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there and I think it's really hard to decipher the good and the bad and, you know, I come from a very southern town in Texas where a lot of my family members do not feel politically the way that I necessarily do. Um, and it's been a lot of biting my tongue with that as well, you know? And there's a little bit of me that, that goes into judgy mode, thinking that they're stupid and they're wrong and I'm the only one right. And I think it's, I mean, I still think I'm the only one right, but it's, it's been a struggle for me to, to accept what I personally know is wrong for me and accept it on their behalf. Um, and keep in mind that they're in a situation 
that I may not be in and it's really been hard to, to deal with that. And unfortunately, what's happened in the past couple of weeks, you know, so after, after about week two, you know, the first week was super fun. We were like, oh my God, this is so, I mean, it feels like a mini vacation. I get to work from home. And, um, and for again, the first week I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And then after about week two, week three, I was already over it. Um, and I think the the news and and the media has kind of played into kind of my attitude right now and why I'm depressed and why I'm, you know, longing to go back or whatever the new normal is going to be. Um, and I don't want to hear bad news anymore. I just, I want to stay informed, but I don't want to hear anything bad. And I know that's not the truth, you know? So... Of everything I think um, I've definitely been cooking a lot more and loving it and it's it's interesting because I usually use like painting as a form of meditation and that has been extremely difficult for me during this time and I think it's because I get get a lot of my inspiration from like my friends and the city and just like I don't know, walking into a coffee shop and I haven't had that. So I kind of like funneled all of like my creative energy into cooking and it's been been cool. Um, I, I try to do yoga on a daily basis. Try, try is the key word there. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I've just been, I've been I like avoiding bad habits. Like I haven't been drinking as much and I've just, Tr been trying to like really focus on myself which I normally don't do and it's very easy to neglect yourself I feel when you're like operating on autopilot which is like a Monday through Friday kind of kind of deal you know so yeah that's my answer <laughs> Um, the biggest challenge, well, so my four-year-old is, um, adrenal insufficient, which means he has a compromised immune system. And so, um, he has that, and then my two-year-old, uh, has kind of like the beginning of asthma. And so, like, like the onset of asthma. So when this all started mid-March, you know, it meant all we're hearing is if your immune system compromised or you have respiratory issues, you could die, you know? And so immediately my, my head is going to, oh my gosh, I need to keep these kids safe. And if I don't, they're going to die, you know, and that you go straight to that point. So I think mentally it, it's been hard because you're just trying to be strong and keep them safe. But in the back of your head, you're, you know, are you making the right decisions? Are you putting them in danger in any way, shape, or form? Did I Clorox that box of cereal when it came in from the grocery store well enough that they're not going to get sick, you know? And so all that's happening. And then probably for us, the biggest challenge we've had was that the four-year-old, uh, he uh, had to go to the, emergency, or to the emergency room at CHOP, the Children's Hospital in Philadelphia, about four, three or four weeks ago. And, um... That was like our biggest family challenge because we broke all kinds of quarantine, you know, the two year old had to go to the grandparents and, you know, we had to go to the hospital and it was, you know, thank God CHOPT allowed us to come and go if we needed to. Most hospitals, once you leave, you can't come back in. Um, so the stress of that was on us.
Well, it's definitely been very difficult, I think. And, you know, I know I'm very, like, skewed to the perspective of a student, but, hmm. You know, really having to get used to someone or to get used to online only learning, that's something I'm very not used to. And I, I think I actively avoided an undergrad because I definitely knew I did not do very well in it. Um, to then having to go sit in front of a computer for probably, you know, basically like a full-time job, 40 hours a week. That was very difficult for me. And like, I definitely struggled in getting to really focus it down and focus staring at a screen all day. And I def definitely have like many migraines from that. So I really had to learn to like, instead of sitting in class, you know, being fine, making it through hours and hours of lectures, you know, I had to break up my day and, you know, and have to like, even like walk out of class, you know, walk out of class <laughs> for 10 minutes or something just to blink my eyes and not stare at a computer screen. Um, I think another thing that really changed a whole lot was the fact that, you know, I wasn't used to sitting down all day, even though like between classes you could still get up and you have to walk a couple of blocks to the next building or something like that. You, you know, I, now I sit all day, literally all day. <laughs> I know it sounds like, oh, that's not like too bad, but I mean, I feel so lazy and I feel like crap all the time now because all I do is like sit so you know I really had to try to like force myself to like exercise more even if it's just like walking over by you know lunch break lunch hour and whatnot you know I I really had to try to force myself to do that as best as I could I actually think um, quarantine's been better for me because I have a better uh, work-life balance. I get to see my family more. I get to see my kids more. Um, I actually have breakfast and dinner with my kids, which is different. Uh, so it's probably been the biggest change. And uh, I am working a little bit less. Uh, I don't have to uh, get up so early and work so late. I balance that out, so that's pretty good. Um, balancing the home and the work life. It's very easy to, uh, because you're on your computer and you can sit on the couch, sit in your bed, you can walk around and do whatever you have to do. Um, it's very mobile. It's, uh, losing track of time. And you're working to where I work late. Fortunately for me, what I'm saying is for me having kids, I create a barrier. I'm able to uh, have meals with them, take time in the afternoon to uh, relieve my wife from having to uh, watch them, um, that helps. So that's definitely something I've been talking to you about is not working so much just because you're uh, having traveling to, um, to work. As far as work goes, uh, there's been a lot of changes at work. We are required now to constantly, once we walk into the hospital, we have to be masked. We have to wear a mask all the time. You can only remove your mask if you're eating or drinking something. We are practicing to the best of our ability the six, uh, the, the, the distancing. Uh, we are separating ourselves, all our meetings are cancelled, everybody does the meetings through video conferencing. Um, we, no longer the patients can, no longer the visitors can come to the hospital to visit their patients. So what grandma does sometime, because I am a public notary, and some patients need to sign paperwork for the family members, so grandma goes, gets the paperwork from the family members, takes it to the patient, the patient signs, grandma notarizes, and uh, it goes back to the family members because they cannot enter the hospital. So that's a big change as far as work is concerned. 
as far as our home life, uh, we normally have a very quiet life. We're still doing our walks. Uh, every weekend we go to our park and uh, we restrict, we we're zooming very restricting a lot of shopping. Uh, we tr are trying to go to the supermarket once a week for less than an hour so we can um, be very fast and uh, places like Sam's where we buy bulk things such as water and uh, cleaning material we're going every three weeks sometimes four weeks before we go buy and we buy whatever we need a lot of and then we don't go back What changed was that suddenly we'd cast a musical and suddenly we had to decide, well, were we going to go forward with it? Because at that point, as you recall, we didn't know what was going to happen. Were we going to be able to do the show? We're educators, so we thought, you know, let's keep going because so many of the kids that we had had lost their shows already at school, you know? So we have continued with that. We're still working on it. We don't think we'll ever have it on stage, but we've adapted everything to like table reading. And we've taught dances through Zoom. We've taught all the vocals, you know, we've taught. Um, and what we're doing is making a documentary. And hopefully at some point we'll be able to get them like into a parking lot somewhere and do some of the scenes and put that as part of the documentary and you know like we've come up with all sorts of things that are going to be a part of this thing and but as far as my daily life I don't think it changed dramatically except now going to Costco is like going to war you know whereas before I just go to Costco now it's like arming for battle and I come home and I'm like oh my god that was horrible Plus, I can't go out anywhere I want to do photography and stuff. That That's huge, you know, and, and I can't. We were going to go see my family this summer, all those kinds of things. Those are gone. But compared to, you know, most people, we're incredibly fortunate. I know that, and um, we've had the kids out, we go to a drive-by birthday party where everybody just will kind of have their just drive by the house and put up posters singing happy birthday uh, or yell outs uh, or call out happy birthday from far away. It's the first time we've experienced things like this, but it's still fun. People still connect through this time. And then... Um, Mother's Day was special for me to make connections with other sisters. Um, some of them um, experience a hard time. Uh, I have two of my best friends. They lost their mother in the past year. This is their first time that they're celebrating without a mom. Um, so on, on Mother's Day, I felt um, particularly emotional this year because um, I knew the two moms equally as well. I've been to their houses um, because the two of them were my best friends, one from college, um, one from when I was at work. So we've been friends for more than um, 30, 20 years, I think. And so knowing their, their parents and, and their moms and um, taste their cooking before, so it's just hard for me to not miss them as well. And also to think of the time that um, I may not be together with my mom this year because of this pandemic. So um, 
I had nice meals for my kids this year, but um, it was hard for me to think that uh, this summer we might not be able to go back. Um, and you know, at the same time, you hear about other parents, they're, they're fainting in there, they're, um, um, you know, they're going to different places, it's just, um, it was hard for me. I feel like there's so many, <laughs> so we could spend all night talking about it, but um, some of them has been working from home, uh, which has been very stressful. Um, some of them has been a lot of shopping online, um, you know, spending a lot of time with my family, uh, making sure that I'm taking time for self-care, uh, working out every day, some type of way or form and uh, making sure that I'm getting enough rest and that I'm eating a balanced meal. Uh, it's very challenging, uh, cause it's a lot in, um, you know, Hispanic uh, person. We are very touchy feeling. We love hugs and kisses and we are very affectionate. Uh, so it's been very challenging the only way that we've been able to communicate for the most part uh, with family and friends and even coworkers has been a lot through Zoom. Believe it or not, I do three to four or five, sometimes six Zoom in a day. Um, the biggest challenge, uh, geez, I would just say just connecting with people. Uh, you know, like it, once again, I just love being, I get regenerated by, uh, you know, energized by being around people. So it, it's been one of the most difficult thing for me to adapt. It's, it's, you know, the social distance. Biggest challenge is I am very social. I like going out, I like going to stores, I like visiting family, visiting friends. So having that being taken away is very difficult for me. Uh, the first couple weeks is okay, but towards the end is like, I just wanted to go out for a drive. So I just was always in my car going to somewhere. I'm very active. I uh, miss going to my shows because I used to go to Broadway shows in New York, I go to Broadway shows at the Hippodrome, I miss going to the movies, I miss just visiting my friends, I just, it was very hard to be always on the go and then turn around and be home. Um, so that was a very big challenge for me. Um, but again, I have uh, pets that I need to take care of my kittens and they actually help me a lot so I can interact with them a lot. If it wasn't for them, I think I'd go stir crazy. My husband actually does work outside in the shop. He is a um, contractor, so he has um, a shop out in the garage that he builds and makes things out of. Thank you, Italy. And um, so he's out there a lot, and sometimes I'll join him and help him make things. And I do my needlepoint, so that also helps. Definitely looking forward to getting back to work. I, I like performing. And it will be nice to go back 
and everybody can experience art again as it once was. And I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what it's going to be when we get back to that. But I have a very optimistic personality, and I know it's going to be fine. I just know it's going to look different. So I'm very excited for after quarantine to get back to the hustle, get back to auditioning, get back to seeing my friends in the business, um, I get back to taking dance class because I do that a lot. Um, and yeah, just kind of celebrating Broadway for what it is. I, I just want to perform, really. It's just really being able to perform. Or, or having, the, having the option to be able to perform is really the biggest thing. Because right now there is no option. It was just taken from us, like, like a rug, just taken from underneath of us. Um, so, I could do this, like, this could be my life, if I wanted it to be, even if quarantine was not happening, if COVID-19 was not happening, I could be sitting home doing the same thing I'm doing now, it's my choice, it's just, this is not what I choose to do, this is not what I want to do, I would want to be auditioning performer right now, that's exactly what I wanted to do, so, that's that. Huh. Well, I think after the... It's a long way away, as I see it. <laughs> uh, um, I would like to go back to the sort of things that I'm missing right now, right? The day-to-day -day stuff, right? Um, I'm also on the board of directors for the Players Club of Swarthmore, which is a local community theater. Um, you know, we've shut down. We don't know what we're doing. Um, so, as of right now, we lost... We, when we went to shut down for Pennsylvania, we had to close down two productions. We, we closed the production opening night, right? Opening night, we said, we can't do this. We have to stop this, right? We hoped and we hoped. Um, so that show is literally still sitting on that stage, like a ghost set, waiting to go, right? The actors are ready. You know, can you imagine that? Somebody going, nope, turn the light switch on. Um, we had another show that was in rehearsal and was ready to go follow that up in three weeks. Um, so that theater, which is a great portion of my life, is shut down. You know, my kids show, my, my music mat, my YPTW is on hold right now. It's certainly not going to be a, it's certainly not going to be a production. Um, so we're hoping to do this sort of documentary kind of stuff too, as we're tracking this, uh, along the time. But to get that back in my life and have that interaction with those kids and with the theater and the performing that I miss so much and so much part of my life, you know. Um, to get back to my squad, to be able to go back down to the shore and not have to worry about bringing that virus home, that may wipe out my family. You know, it may take me out, take my wife out at the same time. Um, it would be nice to be able to get back to that. Like I said, I'm the assistant um, dive chief, right? Which means I'm a scuba diver, so I miss the water. I miss that ability to get back and just go out into the water, put my gear on and and... You know, you, it, it's sort of like my personal meditation. Some people do yoga, right? That's scuba diving for me. It puts me in a different world. Um, and I really miss that, you know what I mean? So I miss that interaction with my friends. I miss that interaction with fellow coworkers. I miss that interaction with my theater people. That's what I want to get back. For me, I want to be able to go back outside with like everybody else without a mask on, you know? say the biggest change for myself is just getting acclimated to being more careful with my surroundings. 
I think that would be my biggest change that's a little difficult. So I find the media to be informative, um, but I also know a lot of things aren't real time. So I kind of try to, um, how can I say it? I try not to absorb too much of it on a daily basis. So I try to limit my exposure to the news and to um, just, you know, like newspaper articles or rather online articles just to try and give myself a chance to digress from it being so much. Um, I guess I would say what I'm looking forward to is just to see what our new normal is going to be. Um, I know for me, myself, it was a time out that I needed to push the restart button for myself. Um, a lot of eye openers. Some things aren't as important as I thought they were. Um, so I definitely am thankful but wish it wasn't as um, horrific for others for this reset that we're having right now. That's how I look at it.